GBE TV. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Charmin Prince Show on GBE TV, where we know that progress is a must. And I'm your host, Charmin Prince. Thank you for joining. Remember that we have a raffle coming up for, or I should say a second raffle coming up for Valentine. And all you have to do is send your name and telephone number to GBETV info at gmail.com. I'll tell you more about that um, later. But the prizes this time is a cash, 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 cash prizes. Um, maybe one, two, or three, or one and two. I don't know. We haven't decided, but just stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you for your continued support and thank you for viewing. If you're celebrating your birthday, happy birthday and may God bless you to see many, many more. If you um, and experience or had a milestone, congratulations. If you lost a loved one, our condolence to you and your family. Today I have a guest. I haven't had a guest in a long time. And I have a guest um, that is special. I know you would enjoy it. You would learn from, from her. The show is going to be great. And sure you call someone, call your friend, tell your friend that the Charmin Prince show is on. And um, today our topic is going to be about human trafficking. And the President of the United States declared that January 2018 is Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. So we'll talk about human trafficking. And of course, um, last week and the week before in the news, in Guyana, we had all this publicity um, uh, about human trafficking. So it's present, it's prevalent, and what a better time to talk about it when it's in the news and when you know the United States declare that it is. Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. Um, we're going to talk about the psychological effects, the trauma. Um, some of you may ask, well, why women stay in, in that kind of situation? We will talk about it because my guest is the expert. I am not. Okay? Um, so when you want to talk about things that you're not the expert of, you find an expert. So my guest, and which is my dear friend also, um, will, she's the expert. She worked with um, victims. She has worked with women in human trafficking and still is working. So um, I got the best person for the job today to discuss that topic um, on human trafficking and I hope you enjoyed the show last week and I received quite a few messages or concern and I want to thank you for your concern because a couple of weeks you heard my voice I was congested um, we have this strain of flu here that um, really really had quite a number of us I have a lot of friends that were in bed and it comes with a cold and a real bad cold to the point where it could be bronchitis so that's why I was congested for a couple of weeks but I love you guys so much that I did not allow that to prevent me from doing the show and you know some of you sent your concerns are you okay I'm okay it was just the flu and with a bad cold um, bordering on bronchitis so thanks for your love and your concern and for even noticing that I was congested 
um, during the show someone sent me a message are you okay so yes I'm okay um, it was just a cold some congestion and I just wanted to do the show I can't miss you know I don't like the repeat so but I'm here I'm sounding better right yeah because the cold the cold I don't have the cold anymore um, what else before I bring on my guests um, we're gonna change up the show a little yeah I want to tell you that uh, beginning next month we're gonna dedicate at the month if it's women's health if we're gonna talk about women for the entire month we'll talk about women women unless something comes up in the news that needs our attention and we're gonna talk about men we're gonna talk about family um, so you know you may not want to see that that's just my suggestion and if you think that look I really don't want to hear about women all month or men all month um, I need you know different things you can send us your thoughts about that send us your suggestion again the email address is gbe it's e g b e t v info at g <laughs> anyway i'll get it right <laughs> uh, because i was watching the show and i saw that one of my email addresses is also at the end of the show um but it's gbetv info at gmail.com right send us your suggestions um you might there might be something that you want to want us to talk about or want to hear more about send us that info send us that information send us your suggestion um your feedback we get a lot of feedback via facebook and thank you guys for the feedback that you're sending to us uh, but you could send it to again it's gbetv info at gmail.com again gbetv info at gmail.com and let's go to the greetings hi this is freedom boss you're tuning to the shaman print show thanks for watching shout out to you Welcome back to the Charmin Prince Show, and I'm your host, Charmin Prince. Of course, you're seeing my guest, but I will allow my guest to introduce herself. Yes, good afternoon. I'm Carlotta Walcott. Um, of course, I'm a Guyanese, <laughs> but at, at, the, at the present moment, I, um, I work uh, for the Center of Court Innovation. Um, in the Queen's Misdemeanor Treatment Court with victims of human trafficking. And like you said earlier, Charmin, this month um, we are raising awareness so we can prevent human trafficking. Uh -huh. So this is my guest. Remember I said earlier that um, when you're not an expert at a topic, you find an expert. And Carlotta, how long have you been working with victims of human trafficking? Um, I've been working with victims of violence, um, family violence, sexual violence um, from 2013. Uh, did a little bit on human trafficking, but for the past, from last year, my focus, um, I've been focusing more on human trafficking as of like about a year now. Yeah. How do we define human trafficking? Well, human trafficking is, and, and I heard you talk about slavery, we see it as like modern day, modern day slavery, but it, is, it has components of force, coercion, and fraud. Where you force somebody, you coerce them, or you perpetuate a fraud and cause them to do actions, whether it's labor, uh, provide labor uh, for little or no, uh, remuneration or sex trafficking where you use that person um, against their will to perform sexual acts uh, whatever kind of acts but you're forcing them you're coercing them or through fraud 
So that is just using them against their will. So we can just say that human trafficking is um, having a person perform an act against their or will. An act or services, yeah. services yeah. against services their will. Against their will. Yeah. Um, and which you, not only is it that you're making them do it against their will, but you are profiting, profiting mm -hmm. from that act. So it, not only are they doing it for you, but you are making some form of benefit or profit from what the services they are providing. Okay, so someone is someone is benefiting from the uh, yes. Um, I mentioned earlier that we saw it in the news. Um, there was a raid at a, a hotel and in Guyana, and they had all these women that were uh, found and um, supposedly, mm -hmm. um, you know, human trafficking, but we'll get to that, we'll get, because a lot of times we blame victims. Yeah. I guess a lot of times when we don't understand actions, we are people who, for us to contextualize something, we have to um, be able to, for us to understand it, we have to contextualize it. And so we have to say, okay, this is the person who did it this is the person who was harmed by it this is for for us to really understand and because generally we talk for, for sex trafficking the charge is a prostitution charge and it's the low-hanging fruit mm -hmm. so a lot of times the person who who is the exploiter or the person who's trafficking the um victims they're not necessarily at that site um, in this case, you're talking about in Guyana, you're talking about a hotel, um, but they're trafficked. Somebody will drive you around, drop you off somewhere. So you're the, the, the victim, the person who's being trafficked is the one who might be snatched up and charged with prostitution. Mm -hmm. But the people behind it, who's making all the money, the person who's coercing them, who is using violence against them, is not sought out. And the thing is, the, in, in many cases, in my experience, I'm working with victims of human trafficking who are defendants because they are picked up on a prostitution charge, brought before the court, and that's how I see them, um, to provide them with services. And so they are more often than not extremely afraid hmm. um, because of the coercion, because of the force. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not going to talk. Uh, they, they hardly want to talk. They have a lot of shame. Not only are they afraid, but they're ashamed because sex is is taboo. Talking about sex, acting out. Um, we, we from at that we stigmatize people um, around sex and sex acts and so on so just there it's very difficult for that person whether it's a woman um, whether it's a transgender person um, a person who is gay that is the population mostly I see uh, they don't want to say that this horrible thing unspeakable thing mm -hmm. is happening to them and so they are ashamed and then they blame too. Mm -hmm. They must have done something. Um, why they couldn't get or they're not able to get out of this. And because we too bring this, that judgment to them, you know? I don't believe you. I mean, you, you're being driven around to a place. When they drop you off, why you don't run away? Why you don't? You understand? So all of these factors um, we need to consider mm. when we start the conversation, especially around sex trafficking. You know, they picked up the, the prostitutes. Um, I mean, I, I don't use that term. Um, it's a prostitution charge, but um, we say sex workers, uh, you know. Um, In Guyana too. Yes, okay. And so... Um, you pick them up and you put them before the court and you're gonna what, throw them in jail? Yeah. And what, you understand? You just throw them in jail but- No services. And, and you don't consider, I mean it's the law. You have a law that says prostitution is a crime, but you have to look a little deeper. 
to see is this a, um, on their own free will or are they being forced if they're being forced to sex trafficking and then they're victims not just defendants not just criminals but victims what services um are usually provided for those sex workers that you you work with um first an assessment where they're able to you try to get them into a safe space um where you can talk with them so you offer um psychotherapy any kind of psychological services and this is again this is if they want to mm. because unpacking such violence is very very difficult re-victimizing re-traumatizing so we offer psychotherapy um we offer shelter because most times these and women are transgender women they live in a stable that that's the name where um a trafficker a pimp mm -hmm. will just have all these women or these people in in a home called a stable and so if they they get away from there um, they have nowhere else to go so we can provide them with shelter we can provide them with um, food opportunities for a job um, retraining uh, medical services immigration services it's really depending on their need what is it they needed at this time and what is it they're willing to do at this time and it has to be on their even though they're a defendant in court and they want their cases um, discharged it's still what they want what they want to do but these are the, the, the wide range of services that can be offered um, in, pre in preparation for the show uh, you talk about our judgment I was actually viewing a video of a um, former sex worker mm -hmm. and she was talking about when she left and she returned and um, I had I I was maybe quarter way into judgment being mm -hmm. judgmental and I caught myself and I'm like if I can find myself there what about the person who have no knowledge no information um, about human trafficking the judgments that we we um, meet out on those people because um, I'm, 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 I'm listening to her and I'm like oh you had an opportunity to leave you left why did you return and I caught myself and that it was easy for me mm -hmm. and then I stopped the the record I stopped the video and I said think about this Charmaine you have information you know what it means to to be non-judgmental and you went into that space so quickly but then I caught myself and I said but I congratulate you for getting out easy as quickly as you got in mm -hmm. let's take a break and when we come back we'll continue next gen car rentals for reliable, clean, fuel-efficient, and well-maintained cars, choose Next Gen Car Rentals. Telephone 231-8963 or like us on Facebook. Next Gen Car Rentals, taking you to the next level. GBE TV. Yes, sir! Welcome back to the Charmin Prince Show. I'm your host, Charmin Prince. And next to me is my friend and guest, Carlotta Walcott. So... Welcome back. Thank you. Um, Carlotta, we are talking about human trafficking. Um, and there are so many factors, so many nuances um, that is attached to it. But I want us to talk about the subtlety of human trafficking. Yeah, um, a lot of times we, we, when you spoke earlier, you talked about, you know, they raided this hotel and found these women. 
Um, but human trafficking can go on in your small community, in your home. <laughs> you know, I have seen a, a significant amount of clients. Um, a young girl who's in school, actually in school. Um, she has a boyfriend and she loves him. Um, he provides. I, I give you a case in point. This young girl was telling, was so, so excited about um, this guy taking her to McDonald's. And I mean, for uh, McDonald's, is, you can get a meal for about $5 or less. And she was so excited about being able to go to McDonald's. And so here we are to the intersection where there is the economics, you know, mm. poverty, um, love, wanting attention. And so she has this boyfriend and she loves him very much. And he uses that as an opportunity. She's gullible, she's vulnerable. Um, you know, I have friends or, you know, we want to, you know, I want to take you out. I want to do stuff for you. Um, I wanted to dress you up, you know? And so, but money's a little tight, you know, you can, you know, maybe I have a few friends. I mean, you're so cute. And the next thing she knows, he wants her to have sex or provide all kinds of sexual services to his friends and his friends they're paying him and he's keeping this money and so he's actually trafficking her but she loves him and then she realizes no i don't want to do this now here it it becomes a very violent situation mm -hmm. because now he's beating her your daughter comes home and all of a sudden she's wearing a lot of um, makeup She's 15 and she's 14. She has, um, she's covering a lot of marks and bruises. Uh, and, and here is where you need to be very um, in touch. You need to be paying attention. Um, what, what, what kind of outfits? Is she withdrawn? You have to, to know what's happening because some things she's wearing or she's sleeping. I have a client and I said to her, um, let's set up an appointment for you 11 o'clock she says no I can't do 11 o'clock I said okay what time suits you um, she's giving me a late afternoon time and that wasn't working for me because my schedule was full and I said okay can't you come at 10 and she says no I'm not awake at that time and I said okay all right choose your time and I realized because she works all night mm -hmm. he has her working all night she's seen 10 men and so she's tired, her, she needs to recoup, she needs to sleep. So watch these little patterns. I mean, your own daughter in your own house I'm talking about. She's not going to a hotel and you know about it. Right there she's going to go to her boyfriend's house. And you can call it her boyfriend's house, she's right there. But he is using force, he's coercing her and he's using fraud. And he's causing her to use her body. And then he's beating her when she doesn't want to do it broken bones she said uh, i was playing rounders or whatever we played and i fell why is she falling so often why she's getting hit so often you need to look at things like that she complains about um vaginal infections the yeast infection and this and that what is happening you need to you need to find out so those are some things you can look for it's not only you know the girl standing on the corner but it could be your own daughter your own little son because they're doing it with um, commercial sexual, sexual exploitation yeah. of children so i'm seeing a lot of that as well um while you're talking i remember you know early in december i went to holland mm -hmm. and you know holland is known for the red light district mm -hmm. and there is a prostitution museum okay and um you learned so much uh, about the women um, and I say that to say this just listening to you I remembered some um, during my adolescence that they were guys doing that to school age girls of course right in Guyana of course I you know mm -hmm. so you took me back there mm -hmm. and um their parents had no idea 
No, I think that one of the things I've learned after the fact is that we need to talk in a family. You need family time, mm -hmm. sitting at meal t at a table and talking. You need to know what's happening in your children's life. I remember that. I went to school. These guys in the transom in those days, <laughs> and those guys used to be on American Street, and they drive around your school and they want to ask, um, take you to lunch and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, they would bring those days we were trading, so they would come and they bring you a sneakers or something, and and um, I I knew someone, and uh, he was a friend of the family, and he told he came to our house and he was telling my mother um, what they would do is like they give a girl a nice something, but something is wrong with it. So like it's it's cut somewhere or a button is missing or some some dress but something is wrong or some pair of shoe but something is wrong, and so they get they give that to you, they have sex with you and they give you this gift, and then you realize oh something's wrong with it so you have to see them again to give it back so they can give you another one and they pass, and it's happening again and it's but it's happening. In, in such volumes now it's it's uh, it's very violent mm -hmm. it's a lot of money you know i've heard talk um when i work with clients that okay the um the, when they sell drugs you use drugs and you're done but when you sell a person you keep using that same person mm -hmm. over and over and over again and so it's becoming very violent because there's lots of money involved and and so another thing is that your your the victims are also drug using yeah to lower their inhibitions mm -hmm. um, so that they can do all this and to they starve them so that you do all of this and then you get the reward of some food so watching for malnutrition um, or maybe you have to look a certain way I I've, I've seen. Some things that you you can't even you don't think of. It is so like you say so nuanced that you say, oh, oh I didn't know that I didn't realize that. And the other thing is that I've seen women um, picked up for dr um, drug use or possession. They're not selling. They're using that to cope. Mm -hmm. But they get picked up on a drug charge. And when you talk to them, you realize that their drug use is a coping mechanism because of the mm -hmm. violence mm -hmm. that they're experiencing. Yeah. Um, and I think it goes, the human trafficking and substance use goes hand mm -hmm. in glove. Mm -hmm. Because um, even the video that I was watching, the mm -hmm. girl said that, look, we just had, he introduced us to the drugs and she said she just had to use drugs every night in order to, and she was 15 years old. A lot of girls that are trafficked, very young girls, very impression. I'm not saying older women are not trafficked as well, because they are, but they're very impressionable. It's just that I see those, okay, some people want a better life. So they, in our case, they come to the US they want a better life. But they are domestic girls who were born and raised right mm -hmm. here. Um, but it's just that they, they follow friends, their friends tell them, you know, you want nice things, their parents can't um, provide it for them. And so they get forced into this and then can't find a way out. Let's take a break and when we come back, we'll continue. BETV. Yes, sir! Next Gen Car Rentals. For reliable, clean, fuel efficient, and well maintained cars, choose Next Gen Car Rentals. Telephone 231 8963 or like us on Facebook. Next Gen Car Rentals, taking you to the next level. Welcome back to the Charmin Prince Show. I'm your host, Charmin Prince, and I'm here with my guest, Carlotta Walcott. Now, Carlotta, before we went to the break, we were talking about um, a thought came to me, uh, and, and I remembered watching the one of the videos that I watch in preparation for the show. The girls were recruited on social media. One of them said she was recruited on IG. 
Instagram. And I am mentioning that because you parents really need to monitor your daughter's social media. Um, because the young the girl said at 15 she was she they became friends on Instagram and then for her 16th birthday he got her a gift and then he invited her and shopped for her and took her home she returned home but then after that you know the he allured her more um, and then she got into human trafficking Do you see that often? Yeah, um, social media is one of the places where, because remember, you don't even know some of these people who you who befriend you or who you, your friends are friends. And so a lot of some people invite you to a party. I had a client, two clients actually, one last week and one the week before. They, and I believe their stories. What they tell me, I I deal, I go with what with the story they're sharing with me. I'm not there to judge them. Um, but and they said they were invited to a Halloween party and they went to the Halloween party unfortunately that's the night that um, this establishment got um, got raided and they got picked up uh, the other girl was telling me that this guy you know uh, like a boyfriend she keeps you know I like you whatever whatever take her out buy her stuff and she felt, you know, like he cared about her, um, gave her things. Before she knows it, she's into something that she doesn't want to be in. Um, but then, apart from being very violent with her, he's also very nice to her. The things that she, the clothes things she has, and she, I mean, but her Gucci bag and I got Gucci bag, sorry. But all these things. So she's really like overwhelmed that she gets all these nice things but in on the other hand she's by vi so violated I mean he beats her into submission she showed me marks in her head she got but her hair was nice nice weave I think Brazilian weave and um, but she was able to show me she got a lot of marks on her body so on this one hand she's petrified she's like He's, he's just the devil, he's so evil and all of that. On the other hand, as we continue the conversation, okay. she's saying, but he bought, and you know, he bought me, and you could see how pleased, you know, and the pride in her voice that he's able to give her all of these things. So she's very conflicted. And that happens a lot. We call that trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. This is the person who gives you your very life beat you to a pulp and then say okay take two days and they give you soup and they give you some tea and they rub your feet but that's the person that put you in the bed in the first place but you're feeling oh my god at least he saved my life and then he goes out and he brings you flowers or whatever and you're so happy again um so that is the other part people who are sex trafficked they don't like it they're forced they're beaten there's a lot of violence but that same pimp or exploiter also buy those nice clothes and put them out on the road you know and the other thing um we think it's just men so we're looking at all the men who watch our daughters mm. but they're women yes who traffic who are um pimps yes my they, arms they call them yeah they work on to control the the women and so on the girls and so on so you have to be very careful with that too it's not only men who who traffic um they're girls who come and recruit your daughters and your sons and because they do it to boys too i mean my population that i work with it would be females and transgender women but i know I've never worked with men, but I know there's some young boys who are, um, actually that's not true. I, I spoke to one boy whose parents sent him from Guyana to America with someone. And on today, like today, they don't know that the man they send their son with horribly abused him, 
groomed him first, groomed him nicely, um, and then turned him out and really beat him. I mean, he was 10. Beat him and put him out there to work, to work, to work. A young boy. So I know it happens to boys. It's just my population. I don't deal with boys, but it happens to boys too. So, But they're ashamed. And I did something and my sister or somebody said, I can tell mommy. And then they, they said, okay, give me your bread. <laughs> and why would you give them your bread? Because you're either f afraid of a beating from your mother, you're, you're just ashamed to, for your sister to say that, you know, tell your mother that you did what, um, stole something or you didn't go to school or something. But could you just remember that fear you felt when your sister or your brother or somebody said, I can tell mommy, give me 25, give me a bomb. Remember those days? Give me your food. And so you give it up your food because you don't even want her. And every time something she brings to you, say, I can tell mommy. And you give her some more food, right? Now, this is sibling kind of thing. Think about uh, someone who is telling you, I'm going to kill you. Or I'm going to get your sister and do this to your sister. Or they don't tell you what they're going to do. They show you what they're going to do by punching you out, by strangling you, waiting until you're almost dead, and then they bring allow you to live. Do you know the psychological mm -hmm. impact of that? Forget about the shame that you, somebody got to know that this is happening to you. But just think about the fear. And I've heard these stories, and sometimes it's just too heavy for me. I, I just, you know, I can't deal with it myself, and it's not happening to me. But just think of the fear that's causing that person to submit and remain. I have been to conferences where you have survivor stories. And the girl says her family was a Christian family or a family of faith. It could be any faith, strong faith, right? She says she's not, she don't want her mother, her father to know that this has happened to her. One time it happened. And the guy says, I'm going to go to your, um, your village. I'm going to tell them. So she, she, she said she stayed with him. She prefers that the first thing she said he did, he beat her so bad. Beat her. When she woke up, she, she said she passed out. And then he promised to tell her parents. You know, I was judgmental religious people mm -hmm. so there's nobody she's ever wanting her mother to know that so she has to remain there because she doesn't want her mother to know think about what your mother will do you ever broke a dish and you're waiting for your mother's coming you know we're Guyanese we know we get a beating this we get a beating we could talk about that you were afraid of that beating so much you wet yourself mm -hmm. before your mother even come home just because the, the glass is broken a glass just before you start judging people, just start putting yourself back in those situations. Mm -hmm. Much less a woman, a young person who a gun is at their heads. Somebody actually fire a shot right next to them to show them. Or punch them out or do them something so awful or tell them they're going to do it. They won't run. They will stay. I'm telling you they will stay. Let's take a commercial break and we'll continue when we get back. Next Gen Car Rentals. For reliable, clean, fuel efficient, and well maintained cars, choose Next Gen Car Rentals. Telephone 231 8963 or like us on Facebook. Next Gen Car Rentals, taking you to the next level. GBE TV. Yes, sir! Welcome back to the Charming Print Show. And I'm your host, Sharon Prince, and my guest is Carla Walker, and we're talking about human trafficking. Now, Carla, um, if someone is watching the show and they know of someone, or they themselves might be a victim of human trafficking what could they do or what can we leave with them mm -hmm. um you 
you really need to tell someone but before we have to ensure that we have systems in place um, from the governmental standpoint task forces um, start to train people make them aware because if I tell my mother what she's gonna do maybe call the police but is the police trained to deal with this? Mm. Um, <clears throat> am I sure that in a small society like Guyana, um, am I sure that I'm safe when I disclose that? When my mother dragged me to the to the station in East Lepenitence or wherever, is there any relation in there? Like, is the person I'm going to talk to related to the pimp in the first place? And do they know them in the second place? So we need to, from the governmental standpoint, we need policies, we need trained people, um, we need forensic psychologists and, and so on to be able to interview, to get information. Um, when you go to the police station, I've been to the police station before to make a report, and you stand up by that, come to there and they're talking to you right there. You think I'm gonna say that I'm being trafficked there? No. So we need to look at systems. And then at the lower level, we need to be able to build trust. Um, again, people need to be trained. When I disclose what will happen, um, because remember I'm afraid and sometimes I go tell my mother and the exploit is bold enough to come to my house and, and try to do something to my family. So but you need to be able to talk about it you need to be able to tell somebody you need to be able to, to be safe to speak and to know that there's a law that protects you and um punishes the person who's violating you in such a way but the the short answer for people looking at this show you have a family a friend or you yourself it's a crime it's wrong there's nothing that you have done to put yourself in such a position. You're the victim. And so you are, it's not your fault. And you need to talk to someone um, about what's happening so that you can get away from that situation. Maybe you need to plan um, how you're going to get out of it. Because sometimes it's very difficult to just get up and walk out. You might be killed. It's dangerous. So talking about it is very important. Find someone to talk to. It's just like domestic violence. Um, in order to leave, you have to have a plan. Yeah. Um, that's one, and that's extremely important. You have to have a concrete plan with your exit strategies. Mm -hmm. You need help. Mm -hmm. You need assistance and support from family, from friends. Um, here in the U.S., you can call an 800 number. I don't know if there is a number in Guyana. I know um, the Honorable Simona Brooms, the, that is the minister, I know she was doing something with human trafficking in the interior. Uh -huh. I don't know what became of that project. Um, and if there is a line, a, a telephone number that victims can call, uh, are there services from the different NGOs in Guyana mm -hmm. that provides uh, support mm -hmm. to sex workers or people mm -hmm. that are victims of okay, human victims, trafficking? Because yeah. mm -hmm. there, I think that we should make that differentiation. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between a human a person who is involved in prostitution via human trafficking mm -hmm. and the person that is the prostitute and don't without the pimp. Yeah, we call them a renegade. They're working for themselves. And then they're, they're those who are forced into it, um, defrauded or coerced. And if someone discloses to you, like you're the parent, I mean, you're, you're hurt and everything, but please don't add more drama. Like why you know questioning them as to why this happened they're too hot they do this they don't they don't need that they need support and they don't necessarily want to talk about the horrors of it they just want you to know this is happening and they want it to stop um and so don't try to you know disgrace them and and put them down and make it about you 
you know, like I spoke two years ago. I yeah, I was at court. There was this young girl who met this boy online, and he um, took her to a park, a toilet, some toilet in a park somewhere, and had sex with her. And the mother, it was a big thing. The mother um, came to court for a restraining order against him and so on. And I'm talking to her. She was a military woman. I came outside to talk with her because she was very, very upset. And she was saying to me, um, you know, look what embarrassment this girl bring on me. Hmm. And she, the whole thing was about her and how embarrassed she was. She's not thinking that how did I had even had to call the reporter who reported the story. Talk so much that you know who this girl is, which school she's going to. It. This is about a 13 or 14 year old girl. And the mother made this whole thing about her. So it's not about you. It didn't happen to you. It happened to her. So you're trying to support her, not the shame and the people in your church. And please make it about the, the victim and not about you and try to support as much as you can. Don't ask too many questions. Most times they don't want to talk. It's too hard. No one will tell you all the details. You don't need to know the details. You need to know that they were trafficked, they were hurt in this way, and how to support them and get them out of that situation. Because a lot of your daughters and sons, is a significant amount of them, these young girls at school and so on, are involved in this, in this kind of thing because they are forced, they are coerced, um, and they are defrauded. They think they love this guy, and he's really taken advantage mm. of that love and they're happy to have a nice i don't know what what the shoes and the the things are um the brands that they definitely want like to have here. you know and so they want to have those brands and you can't afford it and so they're getting it from someone who tells them you know you're beautiful you got nice eyes i love your smile you got the best body and then encourage them to share it you know so that's what we want to tell you. Do something, be supportive, don't be judgmental. How can I, I, I know that we've 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 you've heard us talk about not being but not being judgmental and I shared my story mm -hmm. uh, earlier um, when it was like why didn't you and then I caught myself um, and it's easy yep. for us to be judgmental especially when we don't have all the pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. we don't have the full story and to avoid being non-judgmental take a position just to be a supporter and when the little voice say but oh my god why why when you want to ask the whys you stop yourself and say i don't need to know the whys i just need to listen to them to her or him. And the other thing, so Shannon, I use the um my the fear of my mother story, like I, I said to you before. Mm -hmm. What it was you? But just try to see if you could f fit yourself in that person's space. See if you would even live. They're surviving. Would you survive? Would you be able to survive? Just put yourself. How did you feel when your sister say, I'm going to tell mommy, give me your food, or I'm going to tell her? You're scared of your mother. Hmm. And she's not going to literally kill you, but you, but that man is going to kill her. And that is why she's staying, one of the reasons why. And we have clients who say, well, even if they get a job, they don't work enough to support themselves. And so this is... You know, it's a rock and a hard place. They got to send money back to their family in whichever country and Or they have to pay they have to pay somebody who brought them to the US They have to pay that person back. So if they don't perform these services, then How are they going to pay the person back? You know, so yeah Put yourself in the place of the person. Remember your mother and your sister. Well, Carlotta, I want to thank you for being on the Charmin Prince show. It was an honor. And, um, of course, you'll be back because um, when we're talking about violence against women, mm -hmm. I will ensure that you're sitting next to me um, 
and thank you again. You're most welcome. This was a pleasure. I, I, um, it's a hard topic. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're smiling, but it's a hard topic. Um, but I was happy to come to share, and I really want to encourage you, um, parents, to be vigilant, pay attention to your children, to the lives that you all live. You're busy making a living, but pay attention. And to, um, if you're listening to us and your boyfriend is doing this to you or somebody's doing this to you, know that it's not your fault and, and reach out to someone and tell them um, so that you can get yourself out of this situation. Um, a lot of times we, we're held in bondage by our silence and um, it's difficult to find your voice and use it sometimes, but try to use it to, to tell somebody so that you can get out of this um, very um, difficult, painful situation. But Sharon, I was happy to be here and thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. Let's take a break. GBE TV. Yes, sir! Next Gen Car Rentals. For reliable, clean, fuel efficient, and well maintained cars, choose Next Gen Car Rentals. Telephone 231 8963 or like us on Facebook. Next Gen Car Rentals, taking you to the next level. Next Gen Car Rentals. For reliable, clean, fuel efficient, and well maintained cars, choose Next Gen Car Rentals. Telephone 231 8963 or like us on Facebook. Next Gen Car Rentals, taking you to the next level. GBE TV. Yes, sir! Welcome back to the Charmin Prince Show. And I'm your host, Charmin Prince. And I want to thank my guest, Carlotta Walker. I told you she was the expert um, for being here on the show and for sharing her knowledge, her experience, and information and even encouragement to you. Um, I just want to underscore what she said, that if you are a victim of human trafficking, please speak to someone. Uh, the trauma that is associated with human trafficking is going to take some time for you to overcome it. So I want to encourage you to find someone and speak to them. Also, if you know of someone that is being trafficked, trafficked please let them know that you're there as a support. Um, have a conversation with them. They might be waiting for that, waiting for someone, for you, because they know you know, waiting for you to say something. So I want to encourage you to do that. <clears throat> if you're an NGO and you're watching this show, provide services for the victims of human trafficking. It's just like, the as I said earlier, I think it's domestic violence, the trauma, that is associated with it is domestic violence on steroids. So please um, find the support, provide the support, um, lend the support, whatever you can do. Parents, monitor your children, especially your adolescents. Monitor their social media activities because the males might have fake profiles as females and might be your daughter friend and is grooming your daughter right as we speak or your son for whenever the whatever age or whatever time to allure them into human trafficking please monitor your children's social media. Also, we have a raffle. And in order to enter, to win, with a chance of winning, just like the Christmas raffle, you send your name and telephone number 
your name must match the name on your ID, your government issued ID. And you send that information to gbetvinfo at gmail.com. gbetvinfo at gmail.com. Your name and your number. We are giving away 50 US to the four lucky winners. Right? Four, four of you would receive 50 US. So be sure to encourage <laughs> your neighbor and your friends to watch the show so that they could get a chance to win the Valentine present because it would be a present for you. And we, it, it's for Valentine. You know, um, you might be able to get that 50 US and take your boyfriend or your girlfriend to dinner at, I don't know, the best restaurant in, in Guyana, not no driving, um, or <laughs> um, Pegasus, or the Marriott, right? That would be a nice treat. Um, for your significant other so remember to send your name and your telephone number to gbetvinfo at gmail.com gbetvinfo at gmail.com remember that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That is a quote, I think by, I don't remember, I don't want to misquote, but it's a quote that I want to leave with you. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and you can show that you care to someone that you suspect could be a suspicion might be a victim of human trafficking it might be your neighbor's daughter who jumps in the car every afternoon and comes back the next morning and you suspect that instead of being judgmental and spreading rumor and gossip about her, call her and have a conversation. And share this video with her um, or him. But people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Remember guys that all of the shows are uploaded to YouTube within 48 hours after it's aired. So if you have someone that you want to recommend one of the videos to, one of the shows to, you can go to Charmin Prince on YouTube and you'll find the video. And so if you know of someone who's a victim of human trafficking after the show is aired, you can go with them and to YouTube and sit and watch it. Right? So, thank you for watching. Good night and see you next week. I'm your host, Charmin Prince. Good night until next week.